Jeremiah chapter 29 Mokati la broko soto lo prodia Lan tarabada masharabag lady Amen. We read about Jeremiah, his, his letter to them that were exiled. He asked people to come back to God, they refused. So it happened that the very prophecy he spoke about their exile happened. And he still is a prophet to them. He was writing to them these words. The Bible says now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem unto the residue of the elders which were carried away captives and to the priests and to the prophets and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar has carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. Verse 2 said, says, After that, Jeconiah the king and the queen, the eunuchs, the princess of Judah in Jerusalem, and the carpenters and the smiths were departed from Jerusalem. He entrusted the letter to El Elasa, son of Shaphan, and Jeremiah the son of Elkiah, whom Zedekiah king of Judah sent to King Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. It said, This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters increase in number there do not decrease also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile pray to the Lord for it because if it prospers you too will prosper Amen and he's giving them instruction because there's some false prophet who are lying to them. Who are telling them, you will come back. Your days of coming back is near. The prophecy is about 70 years of exile. And then some other prophets, self-proclaimed prophets, are speaking to them and they're saying, you're going to come back. Says you're not going to come back. <laughs> But it says, yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. Do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. Hmm? For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. For thus says the Lord that after 70 years be accomplished, at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word to, toward you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end, an expected future. Then shall you call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hear again unto you. And you shall seek me and find me. When you shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, says the Lord. And I will return and I will turn away your captivity. And I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places with her I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captives. 15 says, Because you have said, 
the Lord has raised us up prophets in Babylon. Know that thus says the Lord of the king that sits upon the throne of David and of all the people that dwells in this city and of your brethren that are not gone forth with you into captivity. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will send upon them the sword, the famine, and the pestilence, and will make them like vile figs that cannot be eaten. They are so evil. And I will persecute them with the sword, with the famine, and with the pestilence, and will deliver them to be removed to all the kingdoms of the earth, to be a curse and astonishment. Now he's speaking about these people who are speaking things not in his name. Uh, Jeremiah spoke of 70 years of exile. They call him a weeping prophet, Jeremiah. All prophets in Israel have never been respected well. Even when you're speaking the word of God, people are against. The words he has been speaking were despising. They were becoming too evil. They were worshipping idols. Their eyes were not facing God. They have forgotten the statutes of God. And they are living their own life outside the will of God. That's when God declared 70 years of exile. That Babylon will come. And they destroy the city of Jerusalem. And them that are more productive, you know, they didn't collect the whole people. They only collected the strong. In knowledge and wisdom, if you read chapter number one of Daniel, you also see. The man came and collected the best, most resourceful people in the area. And the weak ones, the old ones, he left them. So these strong ones meet them that strong. The Bible calls them kingly seed. If you read Genesis, Daniel chapter 1. Those ones that he collected, he took them to to Babylon, like Daniel and others. And there's so many. After they went there, you see, Jeremiah is writing from where? From Jerusalem. He's not writing from, he's not, in, he's not with them there. He's sending a letter to them. I hear that some prophets are telling you, you will come back. He says, build houses. Marry. <laughs> Bury that dream of coming back home. Because you have how many years? 70 years. And until 70 years is over, you are not coming? Coming back. God is a just judge. That is God's sentence. 70 years in prison. <laughs> and nobody can you stop that? And who gave the judgment? God gave that judgment to the prophets. Jeremiah. And somebody is coming and saying, No, you're going to come back soon. Some prophets. He says, You're not coming back. If you're a young person, marry. Give yourself to marriage. If you don't have land, buy and build. Because you have how many years? 70 years. Do not listen to them that are deceiving you. Do not listen to them that are deceiving you. Then God says, seek me while you are there and you will find me. Even when they are in problems, he's telling them, seek, seek me with your whole heart. One of the things that happened after 70 years of exile they never worshipped idols from that time. And one of the reasons why they were sent there is for those idols to die out of their system so that they only worship the living, the living God. God achieved what he wanted by punishing them for 70 years. 
And they were sent to a place. You know, they wanted to worship idols. So they were sent to a place where idols are in numbers. It is a place like, if it is about today, it's a place like India, where you have millions of idols. You worship, you pray, you pray until you find, you know, this thing is of no use and you forget. Something that is so important that I want us to see here is, even after punishing them, after sending them there, he says, pray for that land. Pray. Verse 7. And seek the peace of the city. With her I have caused you to be carried away captives. And pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall you have peace. Amen. He says, seek the peace of that land. Now these are people who know the heavenly God. Irrespective of how terrible the area is. In other words, the land is always thrown into confusion, fight, chaos. It says, pray for the peace. If the land gets peace, you'll also have peace. If it doesn't have peace, you will not have. He says, continue with your business. Verse 5, he says, build your houses and dwell in them and plant gardens and eat the fruit, them, fruit of them. Take wives and beget sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may be sons and daughters, that they may be increased there and not diminished. Hmm? Life should continue as usual because you have 70 years and I will still be with you you will increase in the land huh? you will multiply you will become wealthy in prison ya mungu hiko sawa ingine unafungu hakuna kitu unafanya 25 years 10 years 5 years unakandani Hii unatumwa pale kama unaenda unaenda kusoma. Eh? God says I will be with you continue. But I'm not withdrawing my sentence. <laughs> but pray for the land. Now this is a land of people who do not know God. People who don't understand who God is. People who don't love peace. Evil and wicked men. The worshippers of idols. There is no difference between that and us today. There is no difference. Hmm? They were cast out of their lands. They are scattered everywhere. Marsabit is looking the same today. It's looking the same today. People have left they have run for their life. <laughs> Otherwise, some will have died by now. They are like, so, the area looks very terrible. I mean terrible. The area looks terrible. The area looks terrible. But you see, God is not saying Come out of this land. Toroka. <laughs> Run for your life. He didn't say that. God can sustain your life. Irrespective of how the environment is. He can keep you peaceful. He can prosper you. When others. Are finding it hard. I'm saying you. He can give you peace amid these others. The Bible says the just shall live by. The just do not live by what the evil people are doing. 
the just in this town also shall not live by the evil wickedness in other words the wickedness of people should not disturb you you have ability to control by your prayer you have ability to control to to bring peace in the land without you being affected you know if you are affected you also need somebody to minister to you <laughs> this kind of session of prayer and the word people take it for granted but it's very powerful somebody is running and from everything that is happening full of fear wondering what will happen to him but they don't want to come to the house of they don't want to pray they will sit there and tell us what is happening our prayer should cause people to speak what our prayer is causing to happen not us describing what they are doing people should describe what our prayer is doing to this city praise the lord so it says build give yourself to the businesses if you're not married marry continue you have so many years to live in that place but continue praying for the peace of that land if you call me with your whole heart this i'll be found of you you know nothing is most encouraging like the words of god look at verse 11 for i know the thoughts that i think toward you says the lord thoughts of peace not of evil to give you an expected end yes you are in a strange land a place that is not your own but i will give you peace there the thoughts i have for you is the thought of peace some people believe that the kind of problem that is happening in masabi is god's will they say god allowed for some reasons god is not a god of war why he wants people to kill each other not god this my thought is that thought of thought of peace not of evil to give you an expected end in other words to give you the future that you deserve you might not feel at home where you are but i am with you <laughs> that's what god says here you're in a foreign land i still have a better thoughts for you as long as you're hearing the word of god your life will never go in the direction that you do not like this still i am in charge even if you are in the midst of such people i will give you an expected end in other words i will give you the future that you desire the future that you expect he says i will give you it's god talking so irrespective of how the town is today we can get the best future that we want in this land not outside here we can enjoy ourselves in his presence and be the best by the end of the year 2022 we should be far more greater bigger and doing better things i mean we should not be thinking that this thing will disadvantage us it will not it will not disadvantage us it will not then shall you call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and i will hear hear ken unto you and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all you are hot and i'll be found of you says the lord and i will turn away your captivity and i will gather you from all the nations and from all the places with her i have driven you says the lord and i will bring you again into the place where when i caused you to be carried away captive so even them that are scattered he says i will gather them them that left will come back in Jesus name 
People have built very good houses if you go to Majengo and some other places. And they have left. Some left as early as the beginning of November last year. They are not in their homes. They are in Nairobi, Anyuki, uh -huh. Isiolo. They will come back in the name of Jesus. And they will come back. Peace will be our portion in this city. In the name of Jesus Christ. Evil will not prevail. He says, I have a thought of peace for you. Not a thought of evil. Now, should we fear evil? We should not. Some of you, I don't know if you heard some. Some gunshot in the night. I think Anthony has heard. I was, we were having Zoom meeting, Google meeting with the leaders in the church. We said we were meeting from 8 to 10. I don't know how we didn't hear. Because I was pushing Muse and some other people to go home then at 10. But just before 10 we heard that they were leasing a lot of shots. We didn't hear. We don't need to hear. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> huh? We don't need to hear. We only hear good news. And then sleep. Even if you hear that, it is not coming for you. It will not find you. That is it. It will not. The problem with people is, eh? Mungu uko wapi? Imeanza tena. Mungu ako. Evil cannot touch you. Because God is on your side. I'm saying no evil can fall on you. No evil. He is big enough and he has his own means to save you. God knows how to eradicate this wickedness out of this county. He has his own ways. As we pray, it will happen. And God will remove it once and for all. That is why we need to prepare to do meetings out there, out there. We need to plan to do meetings out, out there. We just need to plan. And we do meetings out there. We need to. We go to every, all these places. We preach the gospel. As God gives us grace. We need more instrument to go out. I think to make up and then Kutosha. Let's just prepare ourselves. We might begin moving. So that we preach this. We pray every corner of this land. We engage people on the word of God. Yes. A time like this is when preaching of the gospel has to be done intensively. People not, should, should not be hiding somewhere. Putting their tools down. You are called soldiers of Christ. What are you doing with your weapons? Many have put it down. And they are describing how terrible the situation is. <laughs> you have to fight. You have to pray. And come against this evil. Father we thank you. For we are secure in you. We are secure. La de gasata. Maka tila broshara bagladia. Nothing is too powerful to remove us from your hand. No evil is too powerful more than you. We have ability to stop it in the name of Jesus. The Bible says whatsoever things you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. We bind this evil. We curse it to die out of our land. Every source of this evil Mount Orobodo Moshoto. I know there are people who are benefiting from this evil. We stop that prophet in the name of Jesus Christ. We curse that channel that is bringing problem to this city in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we speak peace over this land. Peace 
that surpasses human understanding. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.